The United States strictly guards against Chinese chips and restricts all the technologies it can. However, even so, Huawei launched two flagship chips, Kirin 9000S and Kirin 9010, to solve the problem of mobile phone chip supply. The United States sees it in its eyes and will definitely not remain indifferent based on the other party's behavior. So the United States started again, forming the Four Nation Alliance, to ban the provision of chip equipment maintenance for Chinese companies. The United States forms the Quadruple Alliance. In early April, U.S. Treasury Secretary Yellen visited China and emphasized that she would not decouple from China, otherwise it would cause disaster. At the end of April, U.S. Secretary of State Blinken also visited China. When talking about restrictions on chip exports, Blinken said that restricting U.S. chip exports does not mean hindering China's economic growth. High-level officials in the United States all agree that there will be no decoupling, and it is just to safeguard national security. It is indeed in line with the American style to tell such high-sounding lies. During Blinken's visit to China, the United States, which said it would not block China's development, was forming a four-nation alliance to further tighten maintenance services for semiconductor equipment such as Chinese lithography machines. According to media reports, the United States is pushing its three allies, Japan, South Korea, and the Netherlands, to further tighten restrictions on the export of chip-related technologies and tools to China and will not allow engineers from these allies to provide semiconductor equipment maintenance services to Chinese companies. Previously, foreign media reported that the United States was putting pressure on the Netherlands to restrict ASML's after-sales services to Chinese customers. At that time, ASML also stated that nothing could prevent it from providing services for products that Chinese customers had purchased. However, after the United States formed the Four Nation Alliance, ASML changed its tune. At the ASML shareholders meeting on April 24, ASML's former CEO, stated that the maintenance of immersion DUV lithography machines in China would be restricted. China accelerates self-research breakthroughs. Under the quadruple alliance of the United States, not only the Netherlands, but also Japan, South Korea and the United States themselves will participate in restricting maintenance services for semiconductor equipment. When China purchases photolithography machines, etching machines, thin film deposition, and other equipment from abroad, it requires suppliers to provide professional maintenance and after-sales services. If the equipment is damaged, it needs to be replaced in time. Some parts need to be imported from abroad and can only be purchased from specific countries, such as Zeiss lenses from Germany, light source equipment from the United States, etc. It is available in Germany without participation restrictions, not to mention the United States. There are only two options for this, one is to disassemble parts from second-hand equipment. The other is to achieve breakthroughs through self-research. In comparison, self-research breakthroughs are more reliable. The good news is that China is already accelerating its own research and breakthroughs. A scientific research team from Peking University has developed a corner rhombohedral boron nitride optical crystal which is the world's thinnest optical crystal, 
and has energy efficiency that is 10,000 times higher than that of traditional optical crystals. The crystal can be used in laser technology to manufacture lasers required for photolithography machines. China has its own lithography machine manufacturer, named Shanghai Microelectronics, which is currently able to achieve mass production of 90 nanometers lithography machines. Behind it, there are many lithography machine suppliers participating in collaborative research. The United States does one thing on the surface, but another behind the scenes. It says it will not decouple, but in fact it has done a lot of decoupling. So it is time to recognize the reality. When localization is replaced, the restrictions of Western countries will be self-defeating. If American technology is not available, China will develop its own products and switch needed parts to domestic suppliers, ultimately realizing the rebirth of Kirin chips. It may not be as good as the most cutting-edge technology in the United States, but after Huawei's debugging and joint debugging with Hongmeng operating system, the smoothness is not inferior to high-end mobile phones equipped with American flagship chips. Lei Mengduo is sour and unwilling to admit the fact that Huawei has made breakthroughs, so he can only start from the technological gap. This is just the beginning. There is still a long way to go. Chinese chips are changing directions, increasing production in mature chip fields, and occupying an increasingly important position in the global market. In the first quarter of this year, China's semiconductor production increased by 40%, gradually taking the initiative in mature chip manufacturing. The United States can solve the problem of high-end chips, but mature chips cannot do without imports from China. Some data predict that China will account for 39% of global mature chip production in 2027, ranking first in the world. Not all chips on the market need to use high-end processes, so China can first meet the needs of the mature chip market and then increase the research and development of high-end chips. The effect of the two-pronged approach will be very significant. The United States also wants to win over allies to increase restrictions, but it does not know that this will only become a driving force for Chinese chips to continue to move forward. If you agree, please like it, and welcome to repost, leave a message and share it.